Everything we know about the past, the far past, is based on what we think the laws of nature are and how they work. The Grand Canyon is two miles deep. How long did it take for the Grand Canyon to be cut by the Colorado River? So you look at the Colorado River, you see how much soil it sweeps away in a year, and you multiply, and you get the number of years. Assuming, of course, that the Colorado River has always been running at the same rate and wiping out soil at the same rate, if you assume that, then you can calculate how old the Grand Canyon must be. Whatever we think about the past, the distant past, we are using the laws of nature that we see at our time and projecting them back. The question is, do we have a right to do that? Well, what do contemporary scientific sources say? There's a website called physicsworld.com. And on April 1st, 2003, they have an article called, Are the Laws of Nature Changing with Time? And they write, what do we mean by the laws of nature? We mean a particular set of ideas that are striking in their simplicity, that appear to be universal, and have been verified by experiment. It is thus human beings who declare that a scientific theory is a law of nature, and human beings are quite often wrong. This is not a creationist website. This is a physics website. What makes something a law of nature is that human beings have tested it, human beings have observed it, they, uh, it appears to be universal, and human beings declare that it's a law of nature, and they're quite often wrong. Physicists tend to assume that the fundamental quantities, such as the strength of gravity, the speed of life in a vacuum, or the charge of an electron are all constant. That's what they assume. But it is vital to remember the limitations that have been involved in testing these assumptions. They make the assumptions. How do they test them? Many of the experiments we carry out to test theories are restricted to here and now, to earthbound research labs, or the small part of the universe we can observe with telescopes. If we could somehow do our experiments in a different place or a different time, we might well find that the results are different. So we measure the speed of light for 200 years, and we assume that it's been the same for 14 billion years. That's a pretty big assumption, from 200 to 14 billion. And the same with the gravitational constant, and the same with radioactivity, de radioactive decay, and the same with the mass of the electron. Indeed, Stephen Hawking writes, the universe, this is in A Brief History of Time, page 41, the universe might look the same in every direction as seen from every other galaxy too. It might look the same. We have no scientific evidence for or against this assumption. If you went, a hundred light years in that direction and looked out, would it look the same or not? We assume that it does, but we have no scientific evidence for or against this assumption. We, we believe it only on grounds of modesty. Do you hear? It's moral character that leads us to this scientific conclusion. We don't want to think we're special. We don't want to think we're unique. We don't want to think we're different, so we assume that everywhere in the universe it looks the same when we've only been looking from here. So you're taking one point of observation and assuming all the other rest of the universe would look the same from everywhere that you tried to look. It's another gigantic assumption. Indeed, in 1939, Paul Dirac, one of the founders of quantum mechanics, one of the great uh, scientists of the 20th century, wrote, at the beginning of time, the laws of nature were probably very different from what they are now. Thus, we should consider the laws of nature as continually changing within the epoch instead of upholding uniformly throughout space-time. Here, Paul Dirac, not representing any religious point of view, from a scientific point of view, says, we should think that the laws of nature have been changing, that they have not been constant. Well. How have they been changing? What in particular has been changing? This is now New Scientist, June 2004. The speed of light 
one of the most sacrosanct of the universal physical constants. Sacrosanct is a fancy word for holy. One of the holiest of the universal physical constants may have been lower in the past. A varying speed of light contradicts Einstein's theory of relativity. If it really changes the speed of light, then the theory of relativity is wrong and will undermine much of traditional physics. So you see, traditional physics is leaning on an assumption that the speed of light has always been the same. There's no evidence that throughout all of space-time the speed of light is the same. And now, because of the fine structure constant, there seems to be some evidence that it may be changing. And if so, the whole of physics is going to have to be rewritten. 